Eros and Psyche, Scene 4. Many months passed before the two elder grief-stricken daughters of the king decided to embark on a commemorative journey to honour their sister who had been lost to the corporeal world. As they trudged uphill, a thick mist descended from the heavens and coiled itself around the mountain like an anaconda about to asphyxiate its prey. They had barely made it to the monolith that resembled a stone table when a languorous sleep overcame the both of them. Then there was a violent schism, a crackling cacophonous noise that issued from beneath their indisposed bodies and ripped through the confines of their inner beings. It spawned a subtle division of consciousness to which they were completely unaware, sweeping their ethereal doubles into a whirling vortex and consequently flushing them into a higher dimension of existence. They awoke on a cosmic shore in which sounds, colours, textures, emotions and feelings and landscapes were infinitely more beautiful and vibrant, more meaningful and more titillating than the ones to which they were usually accustomed. Everything here was intimately connected to and dependent upon everything else, and it was impossible to comprehend or understand anything unless one adopted a bird's eye view of creation. This world was a benthic zone in which the weight of any penetrating foreign entity caused ripples that resonated outwards in concentric circles and rendered the autochthonous inhabitants cognizant of its whereabouts. Sisters, is that you? Psyche asked. Psyche? They called out in unison. Yes, it's me, Psyche said. How in Zeus's name did you find me? We just went to the peak where you disappeared, one of them said. And then, and then what? Psyche asked. Ah, uh, I can't really remember. The last thing I remember is this thick mist. Yeah, and the tiredness, said the other. How does one climb such a scoundrel of a cliff? I got bitten by so many mosquitoes. It doesn't really matter. You're here now, Psyche said. Can you girls see me yet? Hold on, said the older sister. For a while my vision was really blurry, as if I was swimming underwater. But now everything is coming too. Can you see me? Psyche resounded. Oh, my gods, said the older sister. I do see you. You look, uh... Like a goddess, said the other. What's that massive thing around your neck? The eldest inquired. It's called the Heart of Time, said Psyche. It looks like one hell of a giant pearl, said the younger sister. The most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. It was a gift from my husband when we exchanged vows, said Psyche. A testament of his love for me. As he himself declares, I watched him skin dive in one of the deepest parts of the sea to retrieve it from the lips of a giant clam. He had to hold his breath for quite some time. When my husband holds his breath, time actually stops. Yeah, right, the younger sister said. Do you really expect us to believe that? No human can do that. You forget, though, that I'm not married to a human, said Psyche. My husband is superhuman. He has risked a great deal for me in the time we've been together including the safety and harmony of the earth itself. Is that why you named the pearl the heart of time? The eldest asked, because time actually stopped. Yeah, literally, said Psyche. What about that splendid palace I see surrounded by stone fountains? And that mountain of riches beyond it? And the gold ridden land? And the pastures and animals? Asked the elder sister. Are they all yours too? Yeah, said Psyche. This is our home. Where is your husband? asked the younger sister. I don't see... sense him anywhere. He has an infinite amount of pastimes, my dear husband, said Psyche. He left this morning to hunt deer, and probably won't be back until dawn. So, you've hit the jackpot then, said the older sister. Excuse me? What I mean is that you've married someone rich, multi-talented, down-to-earth and genuine, and very loving. What more could a girl want? And if what I've seen already is anything to go by, he must be very, very handsome too. Am I right, Psyche? Uh, he has a chiseled jaw, an aquiline nose with blue-green eyes and locks of hair that are the colour of the aurora. Uh, he is olive-skinned, broad-shouldered and very muscular. We're about the same height. He sounds like a god, said the younger sister. I bet he feels very nice too, doesn't he? said the elder one. 
Just the thought of squirming against a physical specimen like that makes my heart race. Which heart are you talking about, sister? Asked the other, the one down there. Come on, girls, said Psyche. You're getting a bit crass. Stop being so prissy, Psyche, exclaimed the older sister. We used to talk about this kind of stuff all the time back when we lived at Dad's place. Since when did you become so proper? Well, that was then, said Psyche. You're talking about my husband. You need to be more respectful. Is he good in bed? The eldest sister pushed on. He must have great sexual prowess. Well, anyone who can make time stand still can probably make eternity feel like an orgasm, said the younger one. I'm sure Psyche would agree. He's the most sensual and intimate being, Psyche said. He cuddles me like no other has before, as if an embrace was a matter of life and death. Nice, they both said. It's a bit difficult sometimes because he's much taller than me, said Psyche, but we find ways around it. Wait a second, said the older sister. Didn't you say before that you had the same height? Yeah, you did, said the younger sister. You lied to us. What in Zeus's name is going on, Psyche? Well, well what? said the older sister. Do you even know what he looks like? Have you ever seen him before? Does he even exist? Or is he a ghost husband, existing only in your own imagination? He exists, Psyche said. You can be sure of that. Then why don't you know what he looks like? Asked the younger sister. Psyche let out a long sigh. He only comes to me after dusk. So, you've never seen him in the light of day? Asked the older sister. Nope. And you've never asked yourself why he won't let you see him? Why should I? Asked Psyche. I trust him. A great quality to have, the older sister said. But I wouldn't be so trustworthy and credulous if I were you. Nobody ever hides without a reason. Yeah, said the younger sister. There must be something horribly wrong with him. He might be physically scarred or disfigured. Or a snake in the grass. Pretending to be someone or something that he isn't, said the older sister. He'll be really, really nice to you until your blind trust and faith in him becomes second nature. And then he'll strike, said the younger sister, sinking his sharp fangs into your throat while you sleep. Exactly, said the older sister. That's what the Delphic Oracle told Dad. Have you forgotten already? No, I haven't, said Psyche. I think about it every day. Don't just think, Psyche, said the younger sister. Act. Exactly, said the older sister. You must expose this fraud for what it is. What are you implying? asked Psyche. Kill him, she went on. Kill the worn out pretender. Tonight, when he returns from his noonday hunt, have a hand held butane blowtorch and an ice pick under the bed. When he's cuddling you, get on top of him, straddle him. Do it when you're having sex, suggested the younger one. He'll be disarmed by the pleasure you're giving him and acutely focused on getting off that he won't see it coming. Bend sideways and pull the items out from beneath the bed when you're riding him, said the older sister. Make sure you've tied his hands to the bedposts first so that he can't harm or stop you. Use a white silk scarf or something. You would have plenty of those. It would be really kinky and lull him into a false sense of security as if you were trying to spice up your sex life by engaging something completely different. When that's all done, steadfast light the small butane blowtorch so that you can see the monster that has embroiled you for so long and then plunge the ice pick into his neck and chest repeatedly without remorse. The new blowtorches create their own spark at the push of a button and ignite quite easily, said the younger one. It will be a piece of cake for you. Ride Rid yourself of that monstrosity and return to us, your family, who love you so dearly. Burn his face with a blowtorch if you have to, said the older sister. Just get away from him as quickly as possible. But I love him, said Psyche. I can't just kill him. Yes, you can, said the older sister. If only for your own sanity and peace of mind. He loves me too, Psyche blurted out. Love hurts, said the older sister.